Hi, boys and girls. It's Miss Kelly, and we are moving along in Chapter 3. And if you have your Social Studies textbook, today we will be reading on page 30. Okay, Section 3.2, Native Americans of the Northwest Coast. Now, in Lesson 3.1, we kind of got an overview of the seven cultural regions, seven Native American cultural regions, and now we're going to zoom in on each cultural region a little bit closer. So the first one that we're going to look at is the Northwest Coast. Now, if you remember on our map, the Northwest Coast is up here. Here. So think of your directions north and west, right? And we said that this is the present day United States. You can see the peninsula of Florida down here. That kind of gives you a little bit of a landmark of where things are. So this would be the area that we would consider uh, today the Pacific Northwest. So the states that are up here, Washington and Oregon and kind of into Canada. So that is where we're talking about today. And you can look back on that map in your packet you know, two as a reference. So let's take a look in our book on page 30. It says, south of the Inuit on a narrow strip of land along the Pacific coast from Alaska to California lived the Northwest Coast Native Americans. Dense fir, pine, and cedar forests grew right to the ocean's shore. So people could settle on the few flat, rocky beaches. The climate was mild, but the area received heavy rain almost all year. Many tribes, including the Tlingit, Chinook, and Kwakiutl, called this region home. Wildlife was plentiful in the area. Fish, especially salmon, filled the streams. Migrating whales swam up and down the coast. Deer, elk, mountain goats, bears, and wolves lived in the forest. The Kwaki Utel used wood from the forest for housing. Their homes were huge wooden structures meant for several families. Outside each home, they placed totem poles. On these cedar poles, the Kwaki Utel carved figures of animals, humans, and spirits. These carvings told about important events in the family's history and indicated the family's social position. Clothes made from cedar bark protected the Kwakiutel from the wet climate. Women removed the bark's soft inner core to make thread. They wove the thread into warm, waterproof coats and hats. The Kwakiutel turned other pieces of cedar bark into equipment that they needed for survival, such as fish traps. They shaped each trap like a cone. Salmon swam into the cone and could not escape. So it sounds like the Kwakiutel tribe would use the cedar, which is a type of tree, for many different things. They would use them for totem poles, to build their houses or homes, to make clothing out of, for making fish traps. So they were using what they found in the environment around them. They had to. So over here, we see a picture, and I see that these look like some type of a boat, or watercraft, and then we have that rocky shore, and I can see in the background there the trees that kind of come almost all the way down to the shoreline, and I think these are houses or homes back here. So that gives us a little bit of an idea of what their environment was like. But let's take a closer look at some of the things about the Pacific, I'm sorry, the Northwest Coast. So here is where that would be. Remember today we would call it the Pacific Northwest. And here are some tribes that lived in that region. The Tlingit, Chinook, Kwakiutel, Simshian, and Tillamook. So these were their plank houses. So the houses, I'm going to put this a little bit bigger so you can see it. The houses were made of those giant cedar planks, and they said that more than one family would live in a house. So that is what a plank house looks like. This is examples of some art from the tribes 
of the Northwest Coast. And you can see that it has a very distinctive style. Uh, the colors are very bright and bold. You can almost see eyes and animals within the animals if you look closely, right? Like there's another little face there. So it's very interesting, their artwork. These are examples of the totem poles that were um, in the book that they talked about. They would carve these out of cedar, and the totem poles would include animals, people, spirits, and it would tell a story or give information or history of the family uh, outside whose home the totem poles stood. So those are examples of some totem poles that is part of their culture. Salmon is a fish that lives in rivers or streams, and that was a very prevalent part of their diet. Remember, they said they made those cone uh, traps out of cedar to catch the salmon. Here are some examples of clothing worn by native people of the Northwest Coast, and you can see that bold artwork, the kind of like what we saw before. Now, this is a story. It is called A Trickster Tale from the Pacific Northwest, and it is called Raven. So I am going to play this. It's just a little um, Native American trickster tale. So they call these types of stories trickster tales. Raven, a trickster tale from the Pacific Northwest told and illustrated by Gerald McDermott. Raven came. All the world was in darkness. The sky above was in darkness. The waters below were in darkness. Men and women lived in the dark and cold. Raven was sad for them. He said, I will search for light. Raven flew across valleys and across mountains. He flew along rivers and over lakes. There was darkness all around. Then he saw a bit of light far away. He flew and flew and came closer to the light. The light was at the edge of the water. The light came from the house of the sky chief and it was shining. Raven perched high in a pine tree on the shore. Raven watched. He saw a beautiful young girl emerge from the shining house and go to the edge of the water. She was the sky chief's daughter. She knelt and drank some water from a woven basket. Raven changed himself into a pine needle. He fell down from the tree and floated on the water. When the girl drank again, she swallowed the pine needle. After a time, the girl gave birth to a child. The child was small and dark with shiny black hair and tiny black eyes. Who do you think the child was? It was Raven. Raven had been reborn as a boy child. The Sky Chief was delighted with his daughter's child. He called him Grandchild. He played with the boy and carved toys for him. He invited the elders to come and see the curious, wonderful child. The elders gathered in the shining house with the Sky Chief and his daughter. They watched Raven Child crawl around the floor of the lodge. He pretended to be playing. All the time, he was trying to find where the light was hidden. He saw a box in the corner of the lodge. The box was large. It was carved and painted with many colors. The box was bright. It glowed. Ravenchild said, Gah! Gah! What do you want? asked his mother. Ravenchild said, Gah! Gah! He began to cry. What does the child want? asked the elders. Raven Child said, Gah! Gah! He cried and cried. My grandchild wants the box, said the Sky Chief. The young woman placed the box in front of Raven Child, but he continued to cry. She took the lid off the box. Inside was a smaller box. She took the lid off that box. 
Inside was a smaller box. His mother took the lid off that box and light poured out of it. Light flooded the room. Inside the box was a shining ball blazing with light. What do you think the ball was? It was the sun. Give him the ball, said Sky Chief. His mother gave Raven Child the ball. Raven Child stopped crying and he began to play with it. He rolled it around the floor of the lodge. Ga, ga! Then he changed into a bird. Ha, ha! He became Raven once again. Ka, ka! Sky Chief, his daughter, and the elders looked on in amazement. Raven plucked up the ball of light in his beak, flew through the smoke hole of the lodge, and disappeared into the dark sky. Raven flew over the valleys and the mountains. He flew along the rivers and across the lakes. Raven threw the sun high in the sky, and it stayed there. This is how Raven stole the sun and gave it to all the people. And why did the people always feed Raven? To thank him for bringing them light. The end. I bet they were feeding him salmon. That looked like a salmon to me. Okay, so today for your assignment, you're going to go into your packet. You're going to do the page that goes along with section 3.2 and the page that goes along with the Northwest Coast where there's a little um, paragraphs that you read and then answer some questions. So I will put the um, examples of those underneath the assignment. You're going to complete them in your packet. And don't forget, put your packet in a safe place I would stick it in your social studies book and bring that to school or put it in a folder so that you will always have it with you at home and at school. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys. I will see you next time.